diminish. Using these definitions of the words, we can place another meaning to how the moon's placement affects the tides. According to Kevin Crampton and Simon Potter, chairman for the Jack and Jill Windmill Society, in their article, The Nursery Rhyme, published in 2015, another origin of Jack and Jill can be attributed to the French Revolution. King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette were not well-liked by their people. They were the last king and queen of France, and they were married to form an alliance between France and England. The people did not like Louis because he tried to increase taxes multiple times, and they did not like Marie because she threw huge, expensive, and lavish parties, and often would disregard her people that were living in poverty and filth. They also did not like her because she had an affair with a very successful military general named Hans Axel von Bersen. He made plans to break them out after they were captured, but they could not escape because they were all the time. We can connect King Louis and Marie Antoinette to Jack and Jill because up the hill would refer to the steps up to the guillotine. The broken crown would refer to King Louis being beheaded by the guillotine and Jill tumbling after alludes to Marie Antoinette who suffered the same death as her husband only nine months later. A popular activity for children to learn from this nursery rhyme is to fill up a bucket with water and have them throw stones into the water like it is a wishing well while they recite Jack and Jill. After hearing about two origins of Jack and Jill and a children's activity, we can now move on to Mary Mary Plenty Prairie. Almost everyone has heard the nursery rhyme, Mary Mary Plenty Prairie, whether it was read to them as a child or if they have read it to children themselves. If you have not heard it, I'll read it to you now from the children's book, Mother Goose. Mary Mary Plenty Prairie, how does your garden grow? with silver bells and cockle shells and, so, and pretty maids all in a row. This nursery rhyme originates from England and has been told to children for hundreds of years. For many years, the oldest known publication was by uh, Thomas Cooper and Tommy Thumb's Pretty Songbook, Volume 2. This is according to Jack Lynch, a professor from Rutgers University and a book he wrote called The Oxford Handbook of British Poetry. 1600 to 1800, published on October 20th, 2016. And over the years that people have read it, they have started to speculate what it actually meant, and in doing so, have created popular theories that reveal the dark history that is behind the seemingly innocent nursery rhyme. All the theories connect the Mary in the story to Mary Tudor of Queen of England long ago. Before I tell you about the main theory, I think it is important that you know a little bit about Queen Mary. Queen Mary ruled from 1553 to 1558, and she had a large impact on England. She wanted to return England to the Catholic Church, and in doing so, she executed and tortured anyone who practiced a different religion. She even burned 300 people at the stake, according to British author Louis Brenda in the British History magazine published on June 5, 2006. She executed common people as well as famous uh, Protestant leaders, one of which was John Rogers. John Rogers was responsible for publishing and printing Matthew, the Matthew Tyndale Bible, which was widely used in the Protestant religion. Now under the first theory. The first theory is about her torturing the Protestants, and it, it associates each of the flowers in the nursery rhyme with one of the many instruments of torture used by Queen Mary. And the last flower, the pretty maid, also hints towards a tool used to execute the Protestants. This tool was called the Scottish Maiden, or what the people called maids. The Scottish Maiden was invented before the guillotine, and it was similar in purpose and design. The second major, um, the second major theory is about her, is still about Queen Mary, but is interpreted in an entirely different way. In, in this theory, that each of the flowers represent one of the major factors of Queen Mary's crusade to rid England of the Protestant religion. The first flower, the silver bells, stand for the Catholic cathedral bells, which Queen Mary wanted all of England to be filled with. The second flower, the cockle shells, refers to the pilgrimage to England. Whilst 
A large number of Protestants were executed. Some were able to leave. Only the richest people were able to leave usually. And the last flower, the pretty maid, refers to all the nuns in the Catholic Church. Finally, however, this has a dark history. Teachers have found a way to use it to teach children and have, have created a lesson plan for kindergartners that helps with memorization and word association. And in conclusion, we first talked about Humpty Dumpty, then Baba Black Sheep, next Jack and Jill, and finally Mary Mary Quite Contrary. The origins of nursery rhymes are far more gruesome than they are made out to be by society. When thinking about nursery rhymes, it is very important to remember the words of Mem Fox. The fire of literacy is created by the emotional sparks between a child, a book, and the person reading.